Hello, everybody. Welcome to week 25. This surprise is our last week of doing curriculum like this. We are going to be putting out an announcement over the next couple of months about the way we are going to revamp our whole curriculum. It's not over, it's just gonna look a lot different. So without further ado, we'll jump into our last week. Again, week 25, we're big now. So this is coming off of you know all of our school kind of scenes. And so there's a lot of recap in this one. And so I'll just give you um, an idea of some of the books. These are just some books I listed and some that I just had for my collection. So if you have any books about going to school, uh, the little engine that could is back in here because it's all about empowering our children. We're different, we're the same. So little, you know, recognizing ourselves and recognizing, you know, the differences in other people. And the discussion topics are, you know, all over the place with this week, but it's kind of tying in from the last couple of weeks. But talk to your child about, uh, being proud of them. So introduce that word proud. And so, and explain to them why you're proud of them. So, you know, be specific with it. It's not necessarily a word they know. You have to teach them that. And then talk again about what it means to be a hero. And so how they can be a hero, how they can be a hero to somebody else. And then talk about, of course, bigger picture heroes. You um, can also talk about um, perseverance and so I persevered and so tell, talk to them about a time that they did so they might not be able to say that depending on their age or recall that but say you know I remember that time that you got on your bike and you rode down the street you persevered even though you were nervous and a little bit wobbly you did it uh, talk to them about the concept of time and so this is really you know always reflecting on that so we're talking about days weeks months years and we're talking about remember six months ago when you couldn't even write your name or you now look at you writing your letters or remember you know just giving them that concept of time and then talk about going to kindergarten so of course right now it'll look different so we could be talking preparing them for what it's going to look like virtually but also what the classroom will look like and you know even if it's just a preschool uh, what do you think is going to be in your classroom what do you think you're going to do there and then that's where these books can really come in handy to show you a classroom and some of the activities that they will do and so speaking of activities some of the craft materials that go along with this week uh, just going along with the book, The Little Engine I Could, is making your own train. And so get a bunch of different pieces of paper, cut out shapes, and just have them glue it onto what they think is a train. It doesn't have to look like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just give them the glue stick, if you dare, and uh, let them make their own train creation. And something else that you can do is a little fun mouse game. This goes along with the book if you take a mouse to school. And so you can just make it out of a paper plate. You can color. Adorable little mouse. Paint. I know. Look at that. I love you. And so thank you for drawing attention to the mouse. You could draw a little slit there for the mouse because you can turn this into a counting game. And let me show you a uh, mouse math game. I'll show you how you can do that. You can cut out a bunch of different circles to make uh, cookies. And so by putting the number of chocolate chips. So I just did one through five to keep it simple for this demonstration and then you can make cards uh, with the numbers as well and so I put the dots on it so for younger kids of course they, they can count the dots instead of um, necessarily being able to recognize the number in print and so you can however you want to do it you can just hand them one and say find me this one but you can also lay them down and have them pick one so oh you picked two one two now find the cookie that matches that and then they'll find the cookie and now feed your mouse and so you know you can put this just like this, or you could put it over a cup and then they, um, 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 they can feed their mouse um, the different cookies. If they're real young and your children aren't even at the point of, you know, recognizing numbers or counting, you could just give that this, uh, this activity to them and just feed the mouse and they'll have a great time just um, manipulating the cookies um, and feeding the mouse. And uh, clock is another idea to get them to understand the concept of time. And so for older kids, you might want to cut out the numbers and you can have them glue them in the correct orientation. And then you can stick on the hands with a little uh, fastener or you can use um, pipe cleaners and put a hole in the middle of the plate. And so one way you can do it, of course, depending on their age again, you can have them tell me, you know, show me five o'clock, but you can also say, okay, when the clock looks like this, when the hands are at this location, that's what it is dinner time. So keep your eye out for our clock. And when it looks like this, it's time for dinner. Uh, so that's also an activity that you could do with your kids. And so when we talk about um, enhancing the curriculum, Cinnamon's going to talk to you a little bit about the math concept for this week. So go ahead, Cinnamon. 
All right. So we're going to be talking a little bit about weight, about how much things weigh. And um, this concept came with some really great math and science vocab. So let me go over that really quickly. So some of the vocabulary words are compare. That's a really great word. Weight itself, the word weight, um, heavy, light, and predict. And those are really, really, really great words to dive deeper in and um, teach your children about. So here I have some objects. So you could take some familiar objects that you have at home to compare the uh, weights of. So here I have an apple and a pumpkin. So you can ask them, which one do you think weighs more, the apple or the pumpkin? And you can even have them hold it and see if they can feel um, the difference. Um, two familiar toys to them. You can ask them what, which one they think will be heavier or lighter. Um, here I have a plastic fork and a metal fork so they can um, try to predict which ones will be heavier for that, and then a pencil and a marker. Um, also here, I have a cool little bowl of uh, counting bears for a really good reason, because I also have this really cool contraption that not everyone has, but if you do have something like that, it's really fun to use. So I have this scale here. And so, you know, um, ask your child, like I said, which do you think is heavier, the apple or the pumpkin? So you go ahead and pop them right in the scale. Whoa. And as you can see, the pumpkin is visibly, vis obviously heavier than the apple. But something else that I thought was really cool, and I'm not going to go through um, the weights of all the little objects in front of me, but, you know, another concept is how many bears do you think um, weighs as much as the apple? And so without going counting individually all these bears, I know that there are 29 bears in this bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna slowly pour them into this side until we start to see some, oh, some, some shifting going on. Oh, there we go. And the, interestingly enough, so here we go. So now it looks like the apple's a little heavier. So let's see if I pop the 30th bear in there, what will it do? See, and it still, it tips the scale, right? So let's see if I remove a bear. So an apple is about, the weight of 29 bears, just so you know. But this is really fun. And this object um, comes from a, a, a company called Learning Resources. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this if I try to put it over there, um, how well you could see it. But yep. Learning Resources, um, maybe it's something you can find online. If not, you don't need this. You can certainly do your predictions and your comparisons mm -hmm. without an actual scale. It just makes it a little more fun, all right? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I love that activity comparing the bears to the apple. That's fantastic. You're Definitely, welcome. you know, look around for it on the internet because I'm sure they are available for purchase. And so that is it for this week. And that is it for this curriculum. And so again, please stay tuned. And thank you for having viewed all of these with us. And we will have something new and exciting coming up over the next couple of months. So thank you again. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.